we're going to work on installing a 700R4 into a custom rod. Actually, it's going to be a 1971 Chevelle with a big block. We're going to take out that Turbo 400 and we're going to go through all the steps and tools needed to actually install a 700, set up the TV cable and take it out for its first run. So watch this video and we'll show you how it's done. All right, the first step on replacing the transmission is obviously to, to remove the original transmission. On this particular drivetrain, the first item we're gonna start with is the drive shaft. Primarily the bolt size to hold the clamps down on the U-joint is a 7 16 We're gonna use an opening wrench and we're gonna loosen these bolts to remove the U-clamp, hold the U-joint cap into the differential. So we're going to remove all four bolts and then we can simply slide the dry shaft out of the transmission. Ensure that you don't lose any of these bolts because you will be reinstalling these brackets with the new transmission. And there will be dry shaft modifications because the 700R4 is a longer transmission than the, than the factory unit which was in this vehicle, a Turbo 400. So once all the bolts are removed, you remove the clamp bracket. This bracket here, this actually clamps down onto the U-joint cap. The dry shaft has to slide into the transmission forward to release the U-joint caps from the differential. Be careful you don't lose these caps because you need to reuse these caps or measure them for the new dry shaft or fabricating this dry shaft to fit in for the new transmission. You can now set this out of the way. The next part we're going to start with is we're going to move to the front of the transmission and there's called an inspection cover. So we're going to remove that cover to expose the bolts to hold the flywheel to the torque converter. Okay, now we move to the front of the transmission and this is your starter. This vehicle, particular vehicle happened to have headers on it. So that'll give you some, it's a tighter area. Normally it's more open in this area to install a transmission. This is the engine oil pan. So what we're gonna do, there's four bolts. Sometimes they're like sheet metal type screws or they're machine screws because the case is threaded. So we're gonna remove these four bolts and then we're gonna slide the inspection cover out to expose the, the flywheel and the torque converter bolts so we can remove them next. For the bolt heads on the differential caps, those bolts were 7 16 The bolts holding this inspection cover is also 7 16 When we convert over to the new transmission, everything will then become metric as far as the bolts on the transmission itself. And the monster conversion package will include a new nylon dust cover with the bolts, as well as the transmission mount with the metric bolts to the case. So to get the cover out, you usually have to pivot it to one side to clear the coolant lines and the starter, and then you can slide it out. So it won't come directly out unless you don't have headers. But with headers, you've got to work out a little bit differently to get that to clear. So now the inspection cover is, is off. Uh, now you've exposed the flywheel and the torque converter. So the torque converter, we want to access so we can remove these bolts. There are three bolts bolted from the flywheel to the torque converter. And again, we're working with standard thread. Usually it's a 9 16th and you loosen that bolt. Then we use a flywheel turner or a large screwdriver and you rotate the engine over to expose the next bolt. So we'll do this in progression. We'll take out the first bolt and proceed to rotate the engine to expose the next one. So the new transmission will come with the metric bolts for the torque converter in the Monster conversion package. So you shouldn't have to look for any bolts. Everything will come included in the package. You rotate the engine around to expose the next torque converter bolt. So this is a typical Chevy engine and normally 
the flex plate will have two different bolt patterns. The bolt patterns means the size of the bolt pattern for the flywheel to the torque converter. Normally these flywheels will have both bolt patterns to fit a larger bolt pattern, which is 10 inches from center to center hole. We'll also have a smaller bolt pattern to fit a smaller bolt pattern converter, like a turbo 350 converter, and that'll be 9 and 3 eighths. This one happens to have the larger bolt pattern. So now you can see the torque converter is now free from the flywheel. You spin it independently from, from that. So I pushed it a little further in, into the pump of the transmission, and there's actually a gap. It's about a half inch gap between the flywheel and the flex plate. That is normal. So converter is free. And now we're going to move on back to the cross member. This cross member here, we're going to remove the bolt from the mount two bolts in the mount, and also there's two bolts on either side of the cross member mounting into the frame. So we're going to remove all four of those bolts, and then remove the mount bolt, and then we're going to remove the brackets on the pan, jack up the transmission, and remove the cross member. Again, standard size, it'll be have 9 16 bolt, that's the head size, it's usually a 3 8 16 thread. Now you may have to use some penetrating oil to loosen these things up a little bit because they've been in a very long time. These cars are not antiques and these bolts will take some work to get out. We're going to remove the right side and now we're going to work on the left side to remove the bolts. Again, you want to keep these bolts, nuts and bolts together because you will be reinstalling this cross member and in this situation we're going back in the exact same location even though we're changing the transmission. I'll get into that a little bit later. We're now going to remove the two transmission mount bolts. Those are 5 8 Then we'll bring the jack in to lift the transmission up to slide the cross member out. Before we get the transmission jack up against the pan of the transmission, there's a few items we want to remove first so they don't interfere when we put the transmission jack to the pan. So the first thing, obvious thing you want to look at is your linkage setup. They actually use some pan bolts to hold the support bracket for the shift cable. This cable is when you shift it in the console, will shift it through the gears. And if you follow the linkage up, there's also a connecting rod which goes to the shift column and that's for your neutral safety. That's so the vehicle will not start in any gear. It'll only start when you're in park or neutral. So that mechanical rod going to the steering column controls the neutral switch in this application. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the two bolts. They're half inch. So we just remove those two bolts and this clip on the end and this cable then can come off and lay to the side giving us more clearance to take the pan out. The same bracket will be used on the new transmission mounting in a similar location on the pan. Sometimes a little cotter pan or a specialty clip. This clip can simply just be pulled off you will be reusing this clip, so be very careful not to lose these smaller components because they're very difficult to find. So now the cable is free. We'll take it off the linkage and it is free from the transmission. We're going to lay it on top of the header to give us more clearance. Continue moving the linkage. There is a clip here holding the mechanical shift rod from your steering column to the transmission. So when it's shifted through the gears, it will move the shift column so you can only start it in neutral or park. Now we're simply going to remove this clip. Now you can pull the shifter rod arm out of. Be careful, there's a spring and a plastic dowel. You do not want to lose that. They're very difficult to find. So now this is out of the way for your steering column. The next item is this detent switch. Turbo 400s have it. There's a wire that goes to your gas pedal to a solenoid goes into the transmission. When you accelerate all the way on the gas pedal, it closes that circuit. 
energizing the solenoid in the transmission and commanding it to downshift. The 700 does not use a detent solenoid. So this one here has actually melted. So we're just going to cut the wire and then cut it out once we remove the transmission. So this will no longer be used. And now we're going to remove the mechanical speedometer cable. It's simply screwed into the side of the housing. It's the same thread, same diameter. So this cable will screw directly onto the new transmission. This cable goes all the way up to the DAS instrumentation of the vehicle. And this tells the vehicle what speed you're traveling. So when you order the transmission, we ask you what's your rear tire size. And we also ask what your differential ratio is. With those two numbers, we can calibrate the mechanical speedo to be accurate with your application. Now all these bolts have been removed. We're now going to lift the transmission jack up to grab the pan, lift it, and we'll slide the cross member out of the way. Some cross members have, this is the emergency brake cable. This cable goes all the way up to the foot pedal or inside the vehicle to apply the emergency brake. Some of these cables have a clip mounted into the cross member. So you need to remove the brake cable off the cross member and do not lose this rod because you need to reinstall this when you put the cross member back in position. So now there's no weight on the cross member. You can simply rotate the cross member to slide it out. Okay, now the cross member is out of the way. Now we can slowly lower the transmission down which will expose the coolant lines and all the bell housing bolts. And we'll then undo all six bell housing bolts. So we're down a little bit. Now in this situation, because of the headers, it's holding the engine up. So it is tight up against the firewall. So you'll need a long extension, at least a couple of feet, to reach up from this angle to the bell housing bolts to remove them. And we use a flex socket or a swivel socket, known in the industry, to take out the bolts. And the bolts are 9 16 head. Okay, with a long extension, you get up there with a 9 16 swivel, you can undo the bolts. We've already removed most of the bolts from the other side. Then we're down to the last couple of bolts. Once these bolts are removed, we'll break it away from the, from the engine, pull it back, lower it down just a little bit so we can access the modulator vacuum line as well as the coolant lines in front of that. When the bolts are removed, we're going to slide the tranny back off the dowel pins on the engine block. There, now the transmission and bell housing is off the engine. And now we're going to slowly lower the transmission just a little bit so we can work on the coolant lines. Now we've exposed the coolant lines here and the vacuum line. We're going to disconnect the vacuum line first and use a half inch wrench and break apart the two lines separating them from the transmission. The vacuum line. They remove these lines and we'll leak some fluid Okay, what we're going to want to do is put a pan or something here to capture the oil. Fill the tube out. We plug the hole so it doesn't make a big fluid mess. We're now going to strap the transmission. Some jacks have a strap to secure it. Other have brackets to hold the corners of the pan. So we're going to slowly lower it down. Okay, now that we got the transmission down, there's only a couple of components we're going to reuse. We're going to reuse the factory shifter cable and bracket, as well as the mechanical shifter arm, which mounts onto the transmission. This will unbolt from the transmission and be installed onto the new 700R4. The transmission we ship will include the metric thread nut, but this bracket itself will be reused from your old transmission and will fit directly on the 700 and it's in the same mounting location, so your linkage hookup will be the same. So you're gonna come with a new mechanical speedo set, so that will stay on the old unit, 
and the coolant lines will be on already installed on the 700 when you receive it so this is the old unit and it measures approximately 28 and 3 8 of an inch from the end of the transmission to the front of the bell housing the 700 r4 is a longer transmission it actually measures 30 and 3 quarters of an inch so it's nearly two and a half inches longer so that one involves shortening the dry shaft and we'll get into that when it's time for the install but now we're going to move on to the preparatory items you need to take care of before you install the new transmission okay now the transmission's out of the way it exposes the flywheel to the rear of the engine the first thing we will notice is when we cut the line or disconnect the detent line to the transmission this line here is energized with 12 volt of power we accelerate all the way so most people will just cut the line off and it'll be out of the way. With this vehicle, we're going to actually just protect this line. We're going to cover it with electrical tape, curl it up, and set it up out of the way in the engine compartment. So now this cable will no longer be used. On the other side, we have the vacuum line. This line is no longer used, so we're going to remove this line so it doesn't interfere with the new transmission. So you remove the vacuum line. It's a steel line, and it's attached to a vacuum rubber hose to the back of the engine or carburetor. So you separate the line off the steel line and you can discard the old vacuum line. Now you need, do need to remember when we're working underneath the hood to hook up the TV cable during the installation that we cap off that vacuum feed. If not, your engine will have a miss. So we'll make sure we cap off that vacuum once we're up at the carburetor. The next item we're gonna work on is actually the coolant lines. These are the coolant lines. The thread and the location is the same on the new transmission. So, but we do want to flush it. We want to get all the old debris and fluid out of the trans cooler up in the radiator, flush that out, and then we're going to actually flush it with some of this Cooler Clean by LubeGuard. You simply thread this onto one of the coolant lines, and it's an aerosol based, and it will pressurize and clean the lines and the cooler out and then we'll clean it again one more time with air so to capture all the old debris we just use an old antifreeze bottle anything large to hold so we're going to cover one line with the bottle and energize it with air pressure through the other line blasting all of that fluid out of the system And there, we now have all the old fluid out of the lines and the radiator reservoir. The next component we're going to work on is we're going to remove the six bolts from the flywheel, remove the flywheel from the crank, and inspect the rear main seal and freeze plugs. Because while you have the transmission out, now is the most optimal time to do those necessary repairs. Okay, we got the flywheel off. We inspect the flywheel free and kind of cracks. Usually there'll be spider cracks coming from the bolt areas. And also you want to inspect, or if it's time to replace the flywheel, if this rear ring gear is bad, where it strikes the starter. So if you need to replace the flywheel, now is the time to do it while the transmission is removed. The other areas we're inspecting is the rear main seal for excess of oil leak on this particular engine. It's a big block, 454. So it has the two piece rear main. So it's not leaking here, which is good. Uh, the other areas inspect are obviously the freeze plugs. So we're checking the freeze plugs for any kind of rust, rusting through water. And the freeze plugs are looking good in the engine. And then we're ready to reinstall the flywheel. The flywheel had no damage. But we do have to replace the flywheel in this situation because this is going to a 454 and most of them have a dual bolt pattern. What I mean by that is that where the torque converter mounts to the flex plate, it'll have two different bolt patterns. So this has six bolt holes and you only really use three, three to the torque converter. So normally three in a triangular shape will be 10 inches from the center of this bolt hole 
across to the center of this bolt hole will be 10 inches. And then the other bolt pattern would measure the next pattern would be from this bolt hole center to this one with 9 and 3 eighths. This particular vehicle did not have a dual bolt pattern flex plate, but at Monster we do stock them and sell a flex plate to fit the big block that does offer the dual bolt pattern. You simply line up the guide pin that's in the crank to the guide hole on the flex plate. And you want to ensure that the raised portion of the flex plate is facing the torque converter. Again, you want to make sure that there's locking washers on the bolts, that you reuse those lock washers on the bolts so they do not loosen up during the, the engine's vibration as it's running. Now the flex plate has been installed. All right, now that we have the transmission out of the vehicle, we're ready to install the new transmission. What? Oh, it's right here. Here we go. Here's the new 700R4 transmission that we're gonna install in this nice Chevelle. Now, the first component we wanna install before we put this underneath the vehicle and jack it up is we wanna remove the linkage from the old transmission to the 700. As you see here on the linkage, it has a it's very unique, unique to that vehicle, and it has a squared slot area right here in the linkage. Now that will line up with the linkage arm on the transmission case. So again, the old unit had a standard thread, uh, which was a 3 8 16 thread lever arm, and everything on this unit is metric thread. So this here would be a 15 millimeter, uh, 1.50 thread. So this is the linkage arm that will mount right here. And then the master conversion package from Monster will also include the linkage nut. Brand new nut. So you simply install that right here on the transmission before it's installed in the vehicle. And that's a 17 millimeter or 11 16 if you're using standard wrenches. And you want to tighten that up so your linkage will sign, line up in the same position. The other components that are in same location are the coolant lines and the filler tube dipstick. The filler tube is a little bit further back, so you will need to change the dipstick. That does come in a conversion package, and I'll show you during the installation of the transmission when you should install the dipstick. We also have the two coolant line fittings. Again, it's at the same angle, same location as the old Turbo 400. So let's move on to the car and get started. Okay, now we're ready to install the converter. I pre-filled the converter with about a quart of transmission fluid. I've greased the front hub of the converter a little bit so that will not damage the front seal as we install the converter. Now when you install the converter, you want to gently slide this down the input shaft of the transmission. Now you're going to rotate it clockwise as you push in on it and there it just locked in one clunk and that is the shaft sliding into the stator portion inside the torque converter. So that's the first one and as you push in and rotate it will clunk again. There it goes. The very front hub of the converter has now locked into the pump gears in the pump of the transmission. So this is all the way installed. In fact the clearance here you can see even by the mounting pad you have almost two inches of space between the front of the bell housing and the mounting pad of the converter. Okay, so this is all the way in the transmission. If you spin the converter and this is almost level, the converter is not all the way installed. So ensure that the converter is all the way installed, spinning it clockwise and pushing in. So now the converter is installed.
whosoever holds this converter, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. The next item that we need to install is actually the TV cable. Monster box kit, or if you order just the TV cable, this comes with a very easy to read instructions. And also here's the cable. And with our transmissions, there's rubber boots or grommets that are already pre-installed on the unit. There's one here for the TV cable itself, a rubber boot, as well as one for the filler tube. A warning to let you know don't install two seals, obviously, then it will not seal. The cable will come with a seal on it. There's one already installed in the unit. Just leave it there and remove it from the cable. So this is the cable that you'll be installing. Now it has a extra long steel cable. And you simply just loosen the screw and slide this. So here's the length of the cable. And you're saying initially, wow, this is not going to reach my carburetor. This cable will extend to almost twice the length. That's why you have the extra steel leader line. And you can adjust it to any length you need. And then once you're at that length, you can simply tighten this brass nut. It doesn't have to be real tight. And that will prevent the cable from sliding around or moving on you. On this end, you have an eyelet and it has a hole through the center of this eyelet. You're gonna attach this eyelet to this rod sticking out of the transmission. This bolt, this holds the cable on, and this eyelet will hook onto this, this rod right here. Now before I install it, I notice the seal is on the cable. So I remove that seal because there's already one installed on the transmission case. If there's not one there, then you want to install that seal on the case first. Don't stick it on here and try to shove it into the hole because it will not fit because that rubber will expand to prevent you from installing it. So the seal goes in first. Then you line up the eyelet with the rod on the transmission. So now the cable's installed on the rod. And if you pull the steel line, you can see it moving the cable. So what you want to do is you slide the plastic housing over that assembly and now it cannot come off. It cannot detach. So you push that all the way down, align the hole in the TV cable with the whole thread hole in the case. And you can now install the bolt we supply that has a 10 millimeter head and you install that right in that hole and tighten it down. And that's tight. Ensure that it's flush to the casting of the case so there's no leak. So the cable's installed. And you can test it by pulling on the cable here. And you can feel the tension of it pulling the lever rod onto the valve body. So you can feel that. Now that's installed. So the next item we're going to install is actually the filler tube. The filler tube will not be installed on the tranny at this moment. It'll actually be lined up and goes through the firewall, between the firewall and the back of the engine towards the valve cover on the passenger side. It's much easier to install it now than it is to wrestle it around the transmission later. Okay, here's the filler tube dipstick that comes with the Monster in a Box kit or Monster transmission. So this is the location to put the filler tube I'm just going to show you how it lines up with the casting of the case. You slip the filler tube in, and this top bolt hole on the filler tube actually lines up with the bolt hole in the case. This is the proper location. You do not want to try forcing it down into this hole or install it some other direction. It will not mount. And you do not bolt this to the back of the engine. This actually aligns here with the bolt hole on the casting of the case. But because of this angle here, how it angles forward, you cannot install this all together as one unit. We're going to remove the dipstick 
and we're going to actually feed it up above between the firewall and the engine and lay it up on the exhaust manifold for now. So now that's in position. You don't have to wrestle around the transmission. We'll install it in after we get this lined up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually jack the transmission up and get it in this location here. And then we're going to install the coolant lines onto the casting of the case right here, secure them down, and then put the filler tube in right here and then mate the front of the transmission bell housing to the engine block. Okay, now we've got the transmission up in position where the ears of the transmission are above the exhaust or the headers. We can now install the coolant lines to the case. All right, now we're just finished tightening down the coolant lines to make sure they're secure to the fittings in the case. Once they're nice and secure, then you will jack up the transmission and push it up against the engine block. You want to make sure that the torque converter is free all the way back before we install this to the, up to the flex plate. You want to make sure you have a gap. So we're going to jack this thing up and get it up to the engine block. Line up onto the dowel pins on the engine block, and then we'll start with the two bottom bell housing bolts. The bell housing bolts on the GM blocks normally uh, have a 916 head, and it is a 3 8 volt 16 thread. And believe it or not, that would be the same if you have a, a later engine, LS engine. It's a, it's a 3 8 16 thread bolt, bolt in the transmission to the engine block. Okay, now that we have all six bolts in and the flywheel is free, you can tighten all the bolts. Pull them all the way tight. So now that the transmission is bolted tight against the engine block, okay, now we're going to work on the front part of the transmission. We're going to mount the torque converter to the flex plate. And what you need to do is you rotate the converter to where it lines up with the hole in the flex plate. So this is about where we need to be and what you need to do is pull the converter forward up to the flex plate. So you gently just pull the converter up that easy. Just slide it forward to where the threads on the converter line up through the hole. So now you're going to manually thread this bolt into the torque converter. And then we're going to rotate the engine, turn the flywheel to start the second bolt. You use either a large screwdriver, this is actually a flywheel turner. And we'll rotate the engine over. And now what we want to do is manually tighten the last bolt. Again, it's a 15 millimeter head, so you need a 15 millimeter wrench. Do not use an impact gun. We're going to do this by hand. You tighten this down to about 20 pounds of torque. So now all the torque converter bolts are tight. And what's included in the Monster Box conversion package is a what they call a dust cover. It's a shield which protects the flywheel from road debris, rocks, trash, whatever, from getting up inside the front of the transmission and, and destroying the bell housing or are causing the front seal to leak. So we had to fabricate this cover because this vehicle happens to have headers. So we've cut it down and it fits the, the two bottom bolts here at the bottom of the case. It won't come with the screws as well as the bolts are bolted to the bell housing. So normally it'll take a variety of screws but it comes included in the Monster in the Box conversion kit. So we're now going to install the actual dust cover over the torque converter and the flywheel. We've cut this notch out here. This is for the starter. So this cover will come complete plastic and we cut this area out and it's been modified to clear the headers. Clear the coolant lines and slide it up into that position. These are coarse thread like sheet metal screws. 
because the casting of the case is not threaded. It just has a hole in the case. Head on the top. That's because the bolt head would not fit against this thin wall of the dust cover. Okay. Now the flywheel and dust cover has all been taken care of. We're now going to move to the driver's side of the transmission case. And we're going to work on installing the, the linkage assembly. It's located right here on the, side of the driver's side of the transmission. It's almost directly below the driver's seat. So your old linkage nut will not fit this thread. Now what we're going to install is the linkage arm for this transmission. We're not going to reuse the original linkage arm because we're changing the shifter with a Shiftworks shifter kit. That kit is designed specifically for this application and it will include all the brackets and bolts that you need to attach the factory shifter mechanism to the overdrive transmission. So we're going to take the components out of this kit and install this lever arm onto the transmission case. Okay, this is the lever arm that goes to the case. The manual linkage rod going to your shift console and the column will still fit in the factory location. The slot is the factory size and location and pattern, but this part has been added and it's adjustable. There's a nut on the other side to adjust the, the linkage forward and back so you have accurate shift mechanism for your shift console. So you line that up like so and that will fit into the squared area and allow you to shift through the gears. So what we're going to do now is we're going to install the nut. But the next item we're going to install is the actual, we're going to hook up the lockup circuit on the transmission. And this is the kit that comes again in the conversion package. You're going to order separately. It's a very simple lockup kit. This one has no pressure switches. It's a very simple 12 volt in the ground and it operates off your fourth gear oil circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply just pull out the pigtail for now. You notice there's a lockdown clip here on the end. This will actually be facing the front of the transmission. It'll go in this pattern this is the front of the transmission and this will lock into a connector on the outside of the case this here the line closest to that front end this is your 12 volt connector so this will run up to the fuse box in the vehicle and it will allow you to have make sure it has energy or a 12 volt power when the vehicle is running and this side here obviously is the ground connection so what we're going to do is we're going to clean off an area on the cross member and mount this directly to the cross member as a ground. And when the pressure switch in the transmission closes, when it goes into fourth gear, it'll complete the circuit and turn on lockup. That's the basic premise on how lockup works. Okay, here's the pigtail. This is where we connected the tower going up to the fuse panel. And this is your ground lead. We had to extend it some to reach the cross member. And now this will simply plug directly into the case. We're going to make sure you stay away from the exhaust or headers. And that way it will not come unplugged as you're going down the road. The next component to install is the actual speedometer cable. It's a square little cable. This squared area will fit inside the speedometer gear itself on the transmission. And it's tapered. So the end of the hole is much larger than the cable end. We have questions all the time about that. You need to slide this cable all the way inside the gear and then you can simply screw the housing on. Just ensure it's tight. We're going to wait and install the actual shifter to the pan bolts in this ground after we install the transmission mount and the cross member. We're going to line that up with the chassis. Now we may want to test lay it up there because sometimes the holes in the chassis do not line up if you have to move the cross member. Again, we did use a special tail to keep this in alignment, but sometimes you still have to move the cross member forward and back a little bit to line up the mount bolts. The next item to install on the transmission is the transmission mount. This mount will come included with, again, the conversion package with Monster, or you can buy it independently. This mount is unique in that 
the areas on both sides where it mounts on the transmission is oval slots. That allows you room to go left and right. So the bolt holes, which there's three of them, will line up with the cross member. Some cross members have just a single hole, some have multiple. So this application uses two mount bolts. And what you want to do is you get the cross member in position. You jack the transmission up to allow you clearance between the cross member and the mount of the transmission. So you can slide this in. You start both bolts by hand and you can pull them up, but do not tighten them until you get the cross member aligned. That way you can shift them out left or right to line up the holes with the cross member. So now we'll get the cross member in, in position where the holes line up here. And I recommend you start one of the bolts. And now we're going to install cross member bolts. You can get both of the bolts in for the mount. Now all the bolts have been started. We're now going to secure the cross member down. And they're going to release the pressure of the transmission, allow it to come down so then we can tighten up the mount bolts. We don't want to forget that we have to tighten the mount bolts here. We left them loose so we could adjust everything. A lot of the older vehicles you know, they have mechanical emergency brakes. So this is the emergency brake line here. Runs around and there was a bracket which holds the cable in the cross member. Ensure that you put this component back it locks into the cross member. Cross member is tight, the mount's tight. We're now going to work on grounding the wire. We've cleaned off an area on the cross member, taking the paint off. We drilled the hole in the cross member and we drive the screw in. You would ensure when you install the cable, the ground core to the lockup circuit, that you stay clear of your exhaust so it doesn't melt your ground contact. Now, again, with the shift fork shifter kit, it will come with a new bracket for your shift cable. So you want to disconnect your factory bracket for the shift cable and there is a U-clip here on the cable. You simply pull this clip off and the bracket will come off the cable. Again, the differences are there's multiple holes and slotted holes to adjust this up and down as you install the cable. You put the cable in there, you got the, a new bracket. This bracket will fit directly in here. Now what you need to do is figure out, when you look at the cable, which two pan bolts best fits your application. In this situation, the two bolts right here on the side of the pan are the two bolts that we're going to remove. We're going to take them out so we can install the bracket. I'm going to install, again, the socket head type bolts because the clearance between the pan and the bracket and this mechanism is very small. You don't want to over tighten these bolts because you have a cork pan gasket. You do not want to crush that pan gasket. And this bracket will fit inside the lip of the pan. You can then shift the linkage assembly to hook up the cable. So this apparatus has to be installed in there first before you attach the rest of the mechanism. There is an adjustment bolt on this shaft, this nut here. You have to adjust this and this shaft will slide in and out of this mechanism to adjust setting the vehicle in park or neutral so the vehicle will start. After you install this shaft back into the linkage, there's a little cotter pin mechanism that snaps into the shaft so this does not come out from shifting the car through the gears. Now we're going to attach the cable itself. If the cable does not fit in, adjust this nut so you can get this cable attached onto the shaft. Now that the cable is attached and this nut is secure, you can install the little cotter pin that comes in the 
shifter kit. Okay, the next component to install now that the cross member is done is the dry shaft. So we've altered this dry shaft and actually made it a little shorter. We also changed the slip yoke over to a 27 spline slip yoke. Recommend taking it to a driveline specialist so they can balance the dry shaft and get the correct slip yoke installed. Right, the transmission itself is two and a half inches longer, so the dry shaft needs to be shortened approximately the same distance, about two and a half inch. So slide it in the transmission, and then we get the U-joint caps aligned. Be careful, do not drop the U-joint caps, or you'll be picking up little bearings. So we'll reinstall this. The same as the other items. You want to start the bolts. Do not tighten them down until you have all four bolts started. Now the dry shaft's installed. We should be ready now. We're going to lower the lift. And then we're going to pull the TV cable up through to attach it at the carburetor. And we're going to do the adjustments for the TV cable. We're going to hook up the power line for the lockup circuit to the fuse box. And then we can actually work on the shifter console. And then we're gonna dump fluid in to start the vehicle up. Okay, now that we got the car down, we're working with how to hook up the TV cable to the throttle assembly on the carburetor. So the first thing we wanna do though, is we have to remove the factory bracket for the, the gas pedal or throttle cable. We're gonna install a new bracket which will support both items. It'll support the throttle cable here, as well as the TV cable, which goes down to the transmission. So we have more room to work with. I'm gonna remove this bracket, this mount on the rear stud of the carburetor, remove that and the cable off this throttle assembly, so we have more room to work with. Just remove that nut. So we take this off, and now we're gonna install the cable bracket that comes with the Monster in a Box conversion package. This is the bracket assembly here. It has multiple adjustments. This bracket here is for the gas pedal. This is your throttle assembly. And the one on the underside here, this is for the TV cable. You notice how there's a special area here, and that's where the cable fits through and will lock into this tab. There's adjustments here. See the slots? So you can loosen these screws and adjust this bracket to your application. The same thing for the throttle cable. There's adjustment screws here and it's slotted to adjust this for the correct setup. We've already preset this to these locations and locked down the lock nuts. So this is ready to install into the back of the carburetor. It'll mount in the exact same location like so. Before we block our work area. I'm going to pull the TV cable circuit through this area so we can fit it into the bracket before we install it on the carburetor. So now you can clearly see this is the TV cable. It goes down to the transmission and this is the throttle cable that goes back up to the carburetor. You notice that there's a unique pattern to the end of the cable here and there's a notch here in the bracket. So this tab at the bottom of the cable will fit into this notch. So basically you feed the cable through this assembly, align it with that tab, and snap it in. It will have two tabs that expand open and lock it to the cable. So now the TV cable, the throttle cable to the transmission is now locked into the bracket. Now that that's locked in, into position, you can mount it onto the carburetor. We can now reinstall the nut on the rear stud of the carburetor. And this bracket has a flat area right here that will lock itself against the carburetor to prevent the cable from spinning around. So we're gonna secure that down and now the bracket is in a fixed position, it's not going to move. We can now install the throttle cable in position. So 
So now the gas pedal is back in alignment and is set up. Now we're going to install the TV cable bracket for a Holley carburetor. It's a TV corrector. It'll correct the throw of the TV cable. Okay, here is the, the bracket. It's going to mount in this location here. So these holes are extra large and they're to straddle rib area on the throttle bracket itself, the Holley throttle bracket. So this will fit right over top. It takes two bolts and two nuts. We'll saw the top one first. Now that the bracket is installed, we'll reinstall the return spring. And now we have left is the TV cable itself. The TV cable has an eyelet here with an open end on it. That will snap on to this bracket here on the corrector kit. So you would stretch this out and line it up with that assembly there. You're gonna slide this tab up and lock it over this stud. So now when you accelerate, it will pull the gas pedal and it will pull the, the 700 cable in the transmission. And there will be adjustments after you road test it. Once you pull the slack out, then you want to fill the transmission with fluid. And when you road test it, you want to check your shift parameters. It should shift from first to second gear between 18 and 20 miles per hour. If it's shifting before then, then you need to pull more tension on this cable and tighten it. So you would pull the cable some and relock this down. If it's shifting too late, then you may have to put some slack on the line because then it's, it'll force it to shift too late because this is already accelerating too hard and not allowing it to shift into the next gear. So this is your whole adjustment for your shift points, is this TV cable. It's very critical to get this adjustment correct or you can prematurely burn the clutches in the transmission if this cable's too loose or it comes off. So the next item we're going to do is going to wire in the circuit for the lockup kit. We're going to go to the fuse panel, find a hot lead, and we run that down to the transmission. Now that we've identified a fuse that's hot when the engine is running, then we will wire in our lockup circuit into that fuse. So I recommend you have something that's at least a 20 amp fuse to handle the power for the lockup circuit in addition to the accessory that it's plugged into. Nothing is more crucial to the operation of your automobile than having the proper fluids. Burn Rubber Brewing is the finest and most refreshing beverage for your automobile. Quench your transmission's thirst with Burn Rubber Brewery. Same old recipe passed down for generations. Burn Rubber Brewery Universal Synthetic Cider for all types of automatic transmissions is a special brew of synthetic-based oils with a multifunctional additive system and advanced friction modifiers. This is the one fluid that replaces the confusion about which fluid to use in your automatic transmission, new or old. Keep your tires hot and your transmission cool. Shift responsibly. So we're now going to cap off the vacuum line going to the back of the carburetor that used to feed the modulator on the Turbo 400. You want to put in at least four quarts of fluid before you start the vehicle up. So we're now going to start it up and then add some more fluid and then start checking it from there. Okay, now that it's full of fluid, we're going to take it out for an initial test drive and we're going to double check the fluid levels after we drive it and then also readjust the TV cable if necessary. All right, now we're going to finish installing the shift fork shifter kit into the factory console. As you can see here, it's a Hearst type shifter and it has shift selection for a three-speed automatic. We're going to upgrade this and the shifter mechanism itself for a four-speed automatic. So basically what we have to do first is remove the screws from the bezels here on the front cover. Then we're going to take those components out 
which will open access to the bolts that mount the shifter itself to the floorboard because we're going to have to take apart the actual in components of the shifter mechanism itself and replace some of those components. There's support screws that are still mounted inside the back of the console. We're going to remove those two screws as well as the screws that hold together this console onto the shift mechanism. And now the next components we want to remove is we have to move the shifter back to where we can disconnect the wires to the neutral safety switch. You disconnect the harness. So now the shift console is free and independent. This exposes the entire shifter mechanism and the new component to be installed is this mechanism right here. This component is going to be replaced but this is riveted together by the factory. So we're going to remove the entire shifter assembly to drill out this rivet to install this new bracket and then we can reinstall it onto the floorboard. So we're now going to remove the shift cable here. You remove this clip and then we're going to remove the bolts here holding it to the floorboard and the entire shifter will come out of the vehicle for us to remove this rivet that's mounted down here. There's a clip here holding this cable onto the shifter mechanism. We're going to remove this clip. You simply lift up on the clip and it will disconnect this cable from the bracket. And now the cable is free. We just have to remove these two bolts. It's completely independent now. We're now going to take this down to the shop and drill this rivet out and come back and we'll install the new bracket. Okay, now we have the shifter out. We just drilled out the, the factory rivet holding this bracket in. This is the bracket that's used when you shift it through the gears. This is park, reverse, neutral, three, two, one. So this is the mechanism. We're gonna change this component with the shift works shifter bracket. So now we just have to remove this last bolt, thread it into the assembly. So that's a factory and this is the overdrive bracket. So now we're going to install this back in the same position. And it comes with a new nut and bolt to replace the component that was the factory rivet. So now it's a four speed shifter. We're now going to mount this back in the vehicle. Before you mount it to the floorboard, some of the shift cables are too tight to the floor pan and you have to actually install the cable first into the shift bracket and then align it position. It will make it much easier for the install. So install the shift cable prior to mounting it to the floor pan. Install the cable in the, into the slot of the shift bracket and then you want to install the clip itself. And now the shift cable is installed on the shifter. Now you can line it up with the holes in the floorboard to remount it, you can now reattach the cable. You can reuse the factory clip. Now the shift cable is installed. And now we can slide the shift console back over top this assembly to install the console onto the shifter bracket. You need to be careful that your electrical wires and connectors are routed correctly through the shifter mechanism. Okay, now that the cables are all fed correctly down to the neutral safety switch, we are going to install the bolts to mount the shifter console down to the shifter and the floorboard. One of the wires has a ground strap. It's your ground for the shifter and neutral safety switch. So you use one of the bolts to support that gets mounted into the shifter itself.
Now we're going to reconnect the harness. And we're going to reconnect the neutral safety switch. We're going to make sure the wires stay clear of the shifter mechanism because the neutral switch is just below the bar, the support bar in the her shifter. To make sure the wires stay clear of that area. We install this cover bezel. This is the last component to install. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change the three speed shifter mechanism. You know, three, two, one. We're gonna convert this bezel, comes in a shift work shifter kit, and it's gonna have four forward gears. So it's gonna be four, three, two, one. So uh, we take apart this bezel assembly. There's some self-locking screws from the factory. We unscrewed those off of these studs, these four studs. Now this bezel will come off. And now you have the cover and the actual bezel itself. So we're taking this component out and we're going to replace it with the new one. It's D, which is fourth gear, three, two, one. And then we'll fit back in the factory setup. Those mount in those locations. And this will set directly back down in over the studs. So there's how it's to be set up. So we'll reinstall the nuts. Now we just need to install the last four screws into the bezel. So this completes the installation of converting over from a Turbo 400 to a 700 R4. We're now gonna take it out for the final test runs, top off the fluids, adjust the TV cable, and we're good to go. If you have any further questions on Installation of a transmission, give us a call here at Monster Transmissions, 1-800-708-0087. Talk to you then.